And we begin with a live look from Capitol Hill this morning. Later today, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky will speak to Congress. His live stream address comes as Russia's bombardment of his country intensifies. Christopher Salas is in Washington this morning with a closer look ahead. President Zelensky is expected to call for additional help, criticizing the current response. Meanwhile, the Biden administration is announcing it will send more weapons to the country. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky pleading for help before Canada's parliament. You all need to do more to stop Russia to protect Ukraine. A similar scene expected while speaking before U.S. Congress later today. Please stop the bombing. How many more cruise missiles have to fall on our cities until you make this happen. But so far, the Biden administration remains adamant against implementing a no-fly zone or sending the country warplanes, fearing it could prompt Russian retaliation. Some lawmakers are calling on the administration to do more. American strength is not a provocation. American strength secures deterrence and peace. Following Zelensky's address, the president will announce an additional $800 million in security assistance. We're moving urgently to further augment the support to the brave people of Ukraine as they defend their country. And next week, President Joe Biden will travel to Europe to meet with NATO allies and in support of Ukraine. No word yet if he will meet with President Zelensky. In Washington, I'm Christopher Salas. Christopher, thank you. And later today, we are expecting to hear from North Carolina lawmakers on President Zelensky's address. Senator Tom Tillis is planning to hold a virtual news conference to share his remarks on the speech that is set to take place at one o'clock this afternoon. And a reminder this morning, you can watch President Zelensky's address to Congress this morning right here on WXII 12. That speech will start at nine. New this morning, a Lexington homeowner is charged after a fire at his home. The Davidson County Sheriff's Office arrested Jason Musco for burning personal property. Crews responded to Riverview Drive early Monday morning, putting out a fire at his mobile home. Crews told us no one was hurt in the fire. Also new on your Wednesday, South Korea's military says North Korea fired a failed missile overnight. Officials say the missile exploded in midair. No injuries were reported. The launch was detected amid speculation North Korea could soon launch its biggest long-range missile since 2017. It is 6.05 happening now. Police in Greensboro are searching for a stabbing suspect. Police say this happened around 5.30 last night on North Green Street. That's in the Fisher Park Historic District. Officers found the victim there with critical injuries. They were later taken to the hospital. If you know anything by chance, give police a call. Also happening now, authorities in Forsyth County are looking for a missing man from Kernersville. A silver alert is out this morning for 37 year old Travis Wilson. The Forsyth County Sheriff's Office says he was last seen on Inland Drive. We are still waiting for a picture of Travis Wilson from deputies, but we're told he has shaved black hair and brown eyes. He's five foot nine, weighing around 200 pounds. Also this morning, we're hearing from people who live in Tobaccoville regarding a proposal to build an event center there inside the village. Forsyth County officials heard some feedback during their meeting held last night. Let's bring in our Rachel Ellis live this morning with more details about the proposed plan. Rachel. Audrey Devante, good morning. Some of those Tobaccoville residents say this project could be a real opportunity for this area. Instead of the initial pushback it got when there were talks of putting the event center in Tanglewood Park. And in a meeting held just yesterday in Tobaccoville, people sat together in small groups, gave their feedback, and asked questions. And Forsyth County officials say the proposed multi use agricultural event center would be located next to Doral Drive with trailer parking and 200 parking spaces. It could also house the North Carolina Cooperative Extension. A multi-use arena in some added park space was also proposed. And while the reaction was overall different than the event center proposal inside of Tanglewood Park, people did share differing opinions on the future of the site. The county parks and recreations have passive use parks, and I think it could be an economic boom for the area. They, they talk about, you know, horse shows and this, that, and the other, but depending on what they truly bring in at the end of the day, there could be a large noise concern as well. And the project is still in its early phases. The next informational meeting will be held Wednesday, March 30th. We're live this morning in Forsyth County. Rachel Ellis, WXII 12 News.
Thank you, Rachel. The time now 607. Second gentleman Doug Emhoff has tested positive for COVID-19. He says he is feeling well and Vice President Kamala Harris has tested negative for the virus. She will continue to test regularly for now. The FDA is looking into authorizing a second COVID-19 vaccine booster. Pfizer is asking regulators to approve another booster shot for people 65 and older. It would be meant for those with the highest risk of serious illness and death from COVID. The second booster would be administered at least four months after the first one. Pfizer's data showed significantly stronger antibodies in patients a few weeks after their additional booster dose. Well, the Senate has passed a bill that would end the nationwide mask mandate on public transportation. The measure was approved in a 57 to 40 vote with eight Democrats joining Republicans to pass that resolution. Utah Senator Mitt Romney was the only GOP senator to oppose the measure. The resolution aims to undo the extended federal regulation requiring face coverings on planes, trains, subways, and other modes of public transportation. It will now head to the House. It's unclear, though, if it will be voted on there. You may be enjoying or regretting that extra hour of daylight <laughs> thanks to the daylight saving from the weekend. That's right, but like most of us, or really just me, but I hope everyone <laughs> doesn't enjoy losing that one hour of sleep. Never fun. No, but get this. The Senate has now approved legislation that could make spring forward and fall back a thing of the past. Yeah, it's very interesting, too. The Sunshine Protection Act would make daylight saving time permanent starting in 2023. The bill was passed by unanim unanimously, and if enacted, the measure would mean Americans no longer need to change their clocks twice a year. The bill now heads to the House. If it's passed there, it will head to President. Joe Biden's desk. You know.